Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Sean Mann and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to solo over a blues 145 progression. So I believe the concepts that we're going to be taking a look at in today's lesson will provide you with a solid foundation to take your blues playing to the next level. So we're going to be keeping things super, super simple today just to get used to the ideas that I'm going to be talking about. So if you haven't already, please like, subscribe and comment on this video. It helps me out massively and hit the bell icon so you are notified whenever I upload a new video. So without further ado, let's get into today's lesson. So for today's lesson, we're going to be in A minor pentatonic, but we're going to be using dominant seventh chords. So I'll quickly go through the chord progression that we're going to be playing over. So we've got A dominant seven, that's going to be our one chord. We've got D9, which is going to be our four chord, or we're going to do D dominant seven. And then we're going to go back to A7, back to the one chord. And then finally we've got the five chord, which is E9, or E7, whichever voicing that you feel most comfortable using. Back down to D9, or D7, and then back to the one chord, the A chord. So we're just going to be sticking to the first position minor pentatonic and that's going to start from the 5th fret on the E string So all of the notes that we're going to be landing on over each chord are going to be contained in this 1st position minor pentatonic in A minor So to begin with, we're just going to go through the A minor pentatonic but instead of going through it as we normally would we're going to try and hang on the A notes for as long as we can, just to make it sound a tiny bit more musical. So for example, we're going to try something like this. So we've got the A note, 5th fret E string, we've got 7th fret D, and then we've got 5th fret E at the bottom. So we're just going to try and hang on those notes a tiny bit longer. So just by doing this, it instantly makes the pentatonic sound far more musical, rather than just reciting the scale as we normally would. So. How does this apply to playing over chord changes? So what we want to try and do is we want to try and highlight the chord tones over each chord. So by doing that, we're going to make the solo sound a bit more deliberate, make your improv sound a bit more concise, and it makes it sound like you know what you're doing a bit more, basically. So over the A chord, just to begin with, just to get used to this idea, we're going to be highlighting the A note. So the root note for now. So we're going to try and create as few simple licks around this A note. So for example, we might play something like this. So there I'm starting on that A note, 7th fret D string. Just using the different notes from the pentatonic. And then making sure to land back on that A note. So let's try incorporating a, a second A note in that first position minor pentatonic. So there all I'm doing is starting on that A note 7th fret D, climbing up through the pentatonic, and then finishing off on that A note 5th fret E bottom string. Let's try going down the octave. So starting 7th fret D, making my way to that 5th fret E string, that A note on the E string. Try and hang on a few notes as we go through. Dig in on a few notes to get those dynamics. That's what we're going to be doing over the one chord, over the A chord. Just highlighting the root notes for now. So as we move over the four chord, 
we've got the D9 chord, we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did with the A, but this time we're going to be highlighting the D notes, still in the confines of the first position minor pentatonic. But this time we've got a D note here on the 7th fret G, and we've got this D note here on the 5th fret A. So here I play the, pretty much the same lick that I did over the A chord, but instead of landing on the A note, I'm going to land on the D note. And then we've got this other D note, 5th fret A string. So all I'm doing there. 7th fret G to start, climb down the pentatonic, go down the blues, to land on that D note, 5th fret A string. And then we're going to go back to the 1 chord, back to the A chord. Highlighting the A notes again over that chord. And then the third chord that we've got, we've got an E9 or E dominant 7. Again, highlighting the root notes of this E chord. So we've got 7th fret A string that we're going to use. And we've also got 5th fret B. Using passing notes from the pentatonic. playing over that E note. So if you notice, I can pull any other note from the pentatonic scale, but just by landing on the root note over each chord, it makes it sound a bit more musical. You can really hear that E chord underneath, even though I'm not playing it. Back down on the D chord, back down on the 4 chord. And then back to the 1 chord again. So I'd say go through the chords a few times, highlighting the root notes over each chord, just to get used to that idea, get your ear used to that sound. And then once you're comfortable with that idea, we're gonna try and add in the major third of each chord. So if we're playing dominant chords, it's a good idea to try and land on the major third, because that's like a major note that makes up the dominant seventh sound, so. sounds good if we land on that major third. So here we're going to do the same type of licks, but instead we're going to highlight this major third note. For the A chord, it's going to be the 6th fret G, or um, it can be the 4th fret A string. So we've just got that to the, a, the major third octave there, and if you notice, we're sliding out of the first position pentatonic. But as long as you try and think in your head, I'm still over A, highlighting the major third. So try and think about it in terms of highlighting chord tones rather than what mode or what scale you're using. I find it makes it way easier to kind of to get through this chord progression. So we can play the same type of licks. Starting on the A note, hammer on from that 5th fret G up to 6th fret G. And then we can take that further by going back down the pentatonic and landing on that 4th fret A string.
also sounds nice if you bend that fifth fret G up to the major third. So that's the that's the one chord sorted. Let's move over to the four chord. So that the, the major third of the four chord is going to be this fourth fret D. We've also got the octave of that, which is the seventh fret B. So another new note that we're adding to the pentatonic. Landing on that D root note again. Sounds great over this four chord. So utilizing the root note, utilizing the major third. Back to the A chord again, back to the one chord. Major third. Root note. And then up to the five chord. To the E9 chord or the E7. You've got this sixth fret D string. chord and then finish back on the root so once you're comfortable adding the root note over each chord and then the major third over each chord try and incorporate these ideas into licks that you may already know so I'm just going to play a few like classic blues licks and try and incorporate the ideas that I was talking about there. So we could play something like this. Over the one chord. So I always try and kind of like finish a phrase or finish uh, a musical idea by highlighting these chord tones. That's an idea that we could use over the one chord, over the four chord. Like you'll hear players like Albert Collins always going down on this. That major third of the four chord. And then back to the one chord. Really highlighting that root note over the one chord. Five chord. If we try and incorporate that classic kind of Steve Ray Vaughan lift, that kind of chromatic pull off on the E string at the bottom works really well over the five chord. So we're just making sure to land on that E note, that fifth fret B. Back down to the four chord again. So I'm climbing up to that major third of the D. Back 
back to the one chord. And then once you're used to applying these ideas and concepts into the first position minor pentatonic, try and translate them into the other positions. So maybe go up to the second position. Got this A note on the 10th fret B. Then over the D chord. Still in the same kind of second position area. Going down to the major third of the D chord, the seventh fret B string. So just that little subtlety by adding that tiny little note in makes it sound that you're giving your solo a bit more context over each chord. Back to the one chord. Highlighting that A note, the root note. Over the five chord, over the E. Going up to that E note, 12th fret E string. So whatever position I'm in on the neck, I just try and find the closest kind of note I can pull from the chord from wherever I am. Down to the four chord. And then try and blend in each position as, as you go through. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I hope you got some value out of the concepts that we were discussing today. If you did find it helpful, please like and subscribe. Please comment down below. If you've got any ideas for any other lessons, please let me know down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get those out. Um, but until then, have a good day, have a good week, and I'll see you in the next one.